Hello children, I will continue the fifth chapter human body. This is the second part of the video and we will do nervous system in this part. Nervous system, it is a complex collection of nerves and specialized cells which are known as neuron. Neuron transports electrical impulses between different parts of the body. This is the structure of a neuron. Each neuron consists of a cell body, dendrites, axon. I will tell you about these parts. Cell body, also known as cyton. This is the main body of the neuron. It is shaped like a bulb and contains the nucleus. And there are some other cell organelles also present here. Dendrite, these are short cellular extensions that receive impulses from other neurons and transmit them to axon. Axon, this is the single long cellular extension that carries impulses from cell body and transmits them to either other neurons or to other organs. The point where an axon seems to establish a contact with the dendrite of the next neuron, this point is called as a synapse. Messages are transmitted at the synapse from the axon of one neuron to the dendrite of another neuron. Now we come to nervous system. There are two major parts of the nervous system. Central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. We will begin with the central nervous system. The central nervous system includes brain and the spinal cord. The brain is situated inside the skull and it is the control center of the nervous system. The three main parts of the brain are cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla oblongata. Cerebrum is the uppermost, largest and most complex part of the brain. Its surface shows ridges and grooves which increase its surface area to accommodate more and more nerve cells. The cerebrum controls voluntary actions such as imagination, thoughts, decision, movement of body parts. For example, running, walking, jumping, etc. This is cerebellum. It is a small egg-shaped part of the brain situated at the base and under the cerebrum. Its main function is to coordinate voluntary body movements and maintain balancing of the body. This is medulla oblongata. It is the lowest part of the brain which continues downwards and merges with the spinal cord. It is also called as the brain stem. It regulates all involuntary functions such as beating of heart, peristalsis of elementary canal and respiratory movements. Now we come to spinal cord. The spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata. It is a cord-like nerve tissue which emerges from a hole at the bottom of the skull and runs downwards almost the entire length of the vertebral column or the backbone. The spinal cord forms an important link between the brain and rest of the body. Involuntary responses to outside stimuli which do not go to the brain, they are managed by spinal cord alone. Such responses are called reflex actions. For example, we pull away our hand if we accidentally touch a hot object without consciously realizing the reason. The hand is retracted from the hot object before having understood the reason because such action is mediated by the spinal cord and not the brain. Functions of the spinal cord It mediates reflex action below the neck region. It conducts stimuli from the skin and muscles to the brain and vice versa. Next is the peripheral nervous system. 
Peripheral nervous system consists of two types of nerves, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Cranial nerves, there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves which arise from the brain and they are connected to nose, eyes, tongue, face and ears. Spinal nerves, there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. They arise from the spinal cord and they carry messages between the spinal cord and the body. Each pair of both sensory and motor nerves. Out of 31 pairs of spinal nerves, there are both sensory nerves and motor nerves. Sensory nerves carry messages from sense organs to the spinal cord. Motor nerves carry messages from brain or spinal cord to the muscles which are also called as effector organs.